Hey everyone, and welcome to After Hours Conversations to help directors thrive in the COVID-19 era. We're gonna get started here in just a few minutes, so come on in. Uh, we're gonna have a few announcements to make, but we're really excited to have everybody here with us tonight. Uh, now, a couple of things I wanna discuss before we get started. The first is, is we've got two different chat panels going on. One is for questions, one is for chat. So if you've got any questions tonight that you wanna to pose to the panel, please be sure to throw that in the questions bar over there because that's what we're gonna be monitoring throughout the conversation. If you've got something you wanna share with all of the other attendees, you can throw that in the chat as well and that will be shared with everyone else. So we're gonna get started here in just about 30 seconds. We've still got some more people coming in uh, to today's webinar and we're excited to get started. So uh, again, today's conversation all about retention. We, last week we talked about recruiting. We had some great ideas, some great content on how to recruit students. And I know in previous years you've worked so hard to get your students in your program. Tonight we're gonna be talking about how to keep them in your program because we know that is the other part of this particular conversation. First we recruit them and then we're gonna retain them. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Again, welcome everyone to After Hours, conversations to help directors thrive in the COVID-19 era. My name is Nick Averwater, and I'm with Amro Music here in Memphis, and I will be the moderator for today's conversations. We're really excited to have you on board. We've got some people logging in through Zoom and other people's using the Zoom ID. At the conclusion of today's conversation, we're gonna be sending out any resources that are mentioned as well as a professional development letter that you can turn in to your principal or administration, uh, any other resources or links, things like that that might be referenced. So what that means is if you used a Zoom ID to access today's meeting, I don't have your email address. So just pop me an email at nick, N-I-C-K, at amromusic.com and I will ensure that you receive any of the resources that are referenced in today's conversation. So again, nick at amromusic.com. Next week, May 5th, I just want to look ahead real quick. We've got STEAM, not just STEM, advocating for the arts in our schools. If you want to be a part of that conversation, you will need to re-register. Uh, we want to equip all of our educators to have a conversation to talk about why is music important in our program and how we can articulate that clearly to our principals, our administrators, our counselors, people we might interact with on the street to ensure that our music programs remain vibrant in our communities. Then on May 12th, preparing for the upcoming marching band season. A lot of question marks as it relates to marching band. So we're just gonna start unpacking some of those things and looking at solutions and hear what other programs are doing as it relates to marching band for the upcoming fall. So that's enough for me. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to our panelists. So panelists, welcome. If you don't mind, tell us who you are, where you, te where you teach, what you teach, and then let's start off with a little bit of positivity. If you could just share one thing that has either uplifted your spirit or warmed your heart since your school has closed, that would be great. Kim, how you doing? I'm doing well. I'm, uh, I'm Kim Webb. I teach at Greene County Tech. I'm the high school director. Um, I teach um, high school band, but I also assist with the junior high and the middle school bands, mainly teaching beginning woodwinds. Um, I have been teaching, this is my sixth year. My first five years, I was the middle school director and then I stepped into the high school director position last year. Um, something positive about this whole experience is that I do have a 16 month old and I don't get to see her a lot whenever we have all the after school activities and all the weekend stuff. So um, I've been enjoying my time with her, especially, you know, we get to take afternoon walks and that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm, get to, I'm getting to see her a lot more now that I'm working from home, so. Love it, that's awesome. It's a cute baby too, I love the pictures. Gary, how you doing, man? I'm good, uh, Gary Fight, Munford Middle School, Munford High School, uh, been here my whole career, uh, 28 years. Um, probably what uplifted me the most the last couple of days is I've got to go to the school and I got to see the kids as they come in and pass out like homework assignments and things. I'm just trying to stay more visual because I know our kids need to see us right now more. It, it's just, you know, band is a, just a great thing for them mentally. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. And Stephen, how about you, man? Good. Um, I'm Stephen Page. I teach band and choir at Heath Middle School in Paducah. Uh, this is my 21st year, sixth year there. It feels weird to say we wrapped up in six years because it doesn't feel like it wrapped up. Um, I stole a, uh, one of our at-home assignments from uh, Lindsey Williams that I teach with here in Paducah. Of, um, told the kids to send me a song that you listen to. It could be anything. And um, I just spent some time last night going through those. And these are some, these kids have a lot of 
they've got a lot of thoughts and you know these are middle school kids but wow they, they sent me some stuff i'd never heard of some stuff that i had heard some stuff that i never want to hear again but they they sent me <laughs> that's awesome i love yeah. that and, and Lindsay served as a panelist with us on our first conversation for engagement, and she was fabulous. And so if anybody might be looking for some more information on that, we do have that on our YouTube channel that recorded as well as last week's from recruiting. So yeah, she had some great resources. So glad to hear you were able to put that to use. Okay, everyone. So again, today's conversation all about retention. So what I want to do is talk about in a normal school year, non-school closures, no COVID-19, let's talk about some of the things that you do to, re or to retain your students in your program, and then we're going to talk about how you have tweaked these things to apply to the school closures. So, Kim, you want to kick us off? What are your go-to activities in a normal school year? In a normal school year, we, um, we typically do a, um, a year-end trip to um, get them excited about BAN, make sure that they're you know, they're keeping that excitement. Um, we also, in, I think that retention starts, especially like from day one. Um, I know we bring our marching band out to our middle school students and they get to see a performance to see what they'll be um, involved in one day and that kind of thing. And then also just building those relationships with students. Um, when it comes to the end of the year, you know, we have the conversations with the students um, as a whole. And then if we hear, you know, oh, so and so is not doing band next year, you know, we'll pull them in the office and and find out the reason, whether it's, you know, see if, see if it's something that we can, we can save and, and try to keep them in. Um, I think having those personal relationships and those one-on-one -on, one -on -one conversations are, are the most important thing to, to keep kids in your program. Yeah, I love that. Now, do you, do you change any of those activities or techniques? I mean, we know statistically the most frequent time that kids drop out of music is at their end of their first year and also the jump from middle school or junior high to high school when they're entering usually for most students that eighth to ninth grade year. Do you guys do anything different as it relates to those two groups? Oh, definitely. Um, I, one of the things that, you know, I think the conversation changes from, you know, in the middle school you're, you're like, look at all these fun things that we do. And then when you get to the junior high, it's like, guys, this is really, you know, this is really rewarding. Like what you're doing and what you're going to be doing in the future is really rewarding. So the kids, you know, the kids at sixth grade, seventh grade, they just want it for fun. And then the the next year, they, they've got that maturity of like, man, I want to be in this because, you know, our band wins awards and, and, and there's a lot of fun stuff that's involved in that kind of thing. So I think that um, as they get older, the, the process definitely changes. But I also think that those, um, those one-on-one -on -one, uh, personal relationships, that's, that. I, I think that stays the same. Yeah, yeah. So the, the conversations remain in place, but the things that you talk about shift to reflect their age. That makes sense. Stephen, how about for you, man? Uh, any particular go-to retention activities that you take advantage of in a normal year? You know, in a normal year, um, I always try to, like, hype up that what's coming up next is going to be better. So, like, beginners don't get to go on a trip. And seventh and eighth graders will usually get to go to a holiday world or, you know, maybe sometimes an overnight trip. Um, and, when, you know, when something like that gets mentioned or say like an honor band tryout, and I mentioned that, and I'll, you know, intentionally pretend like I mentioned it in passing to the beginners. They're like, oh, well, sorry, y'all can't try out for all district yet. You're just beginners. You got to wait until seventh grade. Um, and then like, like, we would have done a more pops type concert at the end of the year. And like one year it would be all classic rock. And then one year it would be all Disney or all movie soundtracks. And I let the eighth grade band think they're picking the topic. You know, I'll be like, Hey, we could do this or this or this. And then, but you know, I'll tell the seventh graders, uh, we're, we're not going to do that because eighth grade band, that's who gets to pick what our end of the year, our end of the year concert music is. So when you're eighth graders, you'll get to pick that. So we're, we're always trying to like, make it seem like the next part is cooler um and then that kids buy into that okay so you're always giving them something to look forward to something to be excited about uh, as it relates to the next year a reason to stay in and that makes sense i really like yeah, that. And like even even at a at a concert you know say it's the christmas concert when the sixth grade band is leaving the stage then i'll talk to the families but really i'm talking to the students and i'll be like now here comes the intermediate band and the sixth graders can't play music quite this difficult yet. And so the intermediate band's like, oh yeah, we're playing cool stuff. And the beginners are hearing that. They think I'm not talking to them, but really I'm talking to them 
And then the eighth grade band comes up and plays way more sophisticated music that to them, then you have the intermediate beginners in the audience thinking, oh, I want to do that. So it's not like it's a planned um, program, but it's more of a, a mental approach to how we always talk about the next thing is the better. Yeah, I really like that. Gary, how about you guys? Uh, anything that, what's your, what are your go-to activities in a normal year? Well, for, uh, I'm going to talk to you about the, the 12 year olds first, the sixth into going to the seventh, because retain them first. Um, we try to make a real positive ending of the year, unlike this year, but a real positive ending to the year, really good concert, uh, play for the parents and just have a good ending of the year. And then one week after that, we will offer them a camp to come in and play. And the camp is like open to the entire community and including all the schools. So me and another teacher, uh, Jeff Mayo, will, will teach that camp and it'll just be fun the entire time. We, we have snacks, it's like just, you know, party time the whole time and they learn a whole show in like five days. Uh, and then the, they, they cast off into the summer for June, all of June and July. And they're just like, I remember that camp, I remember that camp. And it's just the propaganda wheels spinning the whole time. So when we finish that camp, I'll, I'll get a whole bunch of posters made up of the kids having a ball and it's like all over the band room. <laughs> So they are going to remember when they get back in August how much fun the ending of the school year was, and they'll, they'll jump right back in. Now, as far as uh, ninth grade goes, uh, normally we would have a meeting in late April to talk to the parents about marching band to prepare them for that. But again, the propaganda wheel is going to be spinning. Uh, every, every positive thing we've ever done is going to be up in their face. So, uh, you know, we, we, I think our last... Uh, little nugget lately has been we're talking about well, maybe we'll go to Disney World in a couple of years you know just things like that to to just keep them happy and wanting to wanting to keep doing it because it's you know marching band and we all know this you guys all know this it's really hard <laughs> it's hard on the kids it's hard on us and I'm getting old so it's really hard <laughs> on these older days but uh, other than that you know uh, you you've seen I have we've had the video made um, I I utilize our alumni to the umps degree I'm always talking to them uh, because a lot of them are, are, you know, doctors, lawyers, and I'm like, send me videos. I'm gonna let the kids see what you're doing now and how much you love it here. Um, and the video you have of, of, of the, the thing that we did, we did our Zoom, we did a Zoom meeting instead of doing our freshman meeting this year, and I think you have that. Um, but yeah, I had a, we have a cinematographer that lives in Atlanta who came out and videoed the band and made this look like a, it looked like a movie. I mean, this is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna take a look at that because I think that was a really cool project, and the the hype part of it was very cool that the cinematographer did. But I think what you guys did and simplicity of it, and, and we're gonna dive into that how you use Zoom to kind of answer some of those questions was great. So, so well, thank you guys for sharing that. Now let's shift gears. So we talked about the normal year. Let's talk about this year in particular. What are some things that either you're introducing that are new and different or that you have changed and accommodated for your present school's closures? So, Stephen, why don't we lead off for you? How, how are you handling this year differently with your students? You know, you know, it happened so suddenly. It was like we're just going to school and we had, um, you know, we, we had school on Wednesday and we were supposed to have a concert on Thursday. And that was like our pre um pre-festival concert, you know, pre-assessment. And so um, Wednesday night was like, in my mind, the night. That's when the NBA canceled. That was like, whoa, this is, this is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And then we get to school on Thursday and our principal was like, there's thunderstorms coming through tonight. Let's not have 600 kids and parents in the auditorium. Let's cancel tonight's concert. We're like, yeah, okay, that's cool. Um, and then we realized, wait, that was, that was it. You know, and then the next day we had class on Friday and that's the last time we saw our students this year. Um, so as we've communicated with kids through, you know, Google Classroom and email and stuff over the last few weeks, we've tried to um, change the focus from being about like ensemble type um, achievements. Like, you know, if, if our focus had always been, let's play this music and let's get it all distinguished ratings, then suddenly it's like that, that, that may not happen. In fact, the music that we were just focusing on, we never actually got perform um so we've tried to really make the mentality the focus being on let's become a better musician and so any assignments that we've done have been geared towards building them as better on their instruments because that's that's the only thing that we know for sure can be relevant 
for next year. I don't want to, I don't want to sell them on, we're going to have this awesome concert in October because there may not, it may not be the, the same kind of concert or full ensemble setting that we're used to. I'm trying to really get them to be aware of, let's get you better on your instrument. And I've, I've never taken that approach, but it could be that a, a quintet is the biggest ensemble they get to play in for a few months, you know? And, and how, what kind of reaction have you received from your students as you have shifted from that ensemble to the music uh, musician? You know, it, it's been a, it's been like a real um, transition from the first few days when we'd send out an assignment over Google Classroom, the kids were like, okay, we're going to do this. And when I see you next week, but here these last few days, it's been like, we're not going to see each other again for a few months. And when we do see each other again, it's going to be different. So the kids have, um, the kids have, have gotten, I think they've gone through like this series of like grief, like at first they weren't buying it, all this denial. And now they're, whenever we, we've had a couple of social zooms where we get all the seventh grade band and choir kids together on one big zoom together. And we don't even talk about school. It's been a lot more, um, it's been a lot more positive. They bought into that more. The last few, um, a few choir assignments I did at the beginning were you sing along with this YouTube choir singing Keep Your Lamps, a song that we were working on. And the last couple of singing assignments that I've posted haven't been about like choral singing. It's been like you make up a warm up for me. You sing some, some individual stuff. Um, so it's, it's been a transition, but I think most of the kids, the 75% that I've heard of have grabbed on now the 25% that have disappeared. I'm not sure about them. Yeah. Well, and, and that, I think you're right. I think all of us are kind of riding that wave of, you know, is this really happening and how does this impact me and, and what does the new normal look like? So I think that's very encouraging to hear that you've got some students starting to transition their mentality from ensemble to the individual musician based. Because um, you're right. I think, you know, it, it's a great way to keep instruments on faces and, and kids continuing to play or to sing or to experience music in their life by focusing on that. It sounds like you've you've shifted really nicely. So, uh, Kim, how about, how about for you guys? Have you tweaked or changed anything? Um, um, one of the things that we've been doing is, um, as soon as this started, we, we got together as a band staff and we kind of made a plan. Um, we made sure we all made Google forms and sent them out, um, to our, our classes, um, through our band app. And we, um, you know, asked them, specifically like hey are you doing band next year um we asked you know if you're not why um we got a lot of contact information and like if they needed forms and that kind of stuff we we've got a, a list of people that we're going to be sending those things out to um that that has helped us kind of stay in contact with kids that you you know that maybe not have like access to zoom and that kind of thing um we are I'm, I'm taking those forms i've made a i haven't done this yet but um i've made a list and i plan on contacting all the kids that say that they're not doing band next year um i'm, I'm going to be um calling them and just you know kind of figuring out what's what's going on and and go from there um and i I also have a great idea that I haven't done yet, but I know like for our sixth and seventh graders, you know, a lot of younger kids and even eighth grade, ninth grade, um, they don't get mail, like real mail anymore. And so I had the idea that, you know, we could write letters um, and whether I, you know, that's a lot for one, two, three directors to, you know, send out 450 letters. Like that's, that's a lot. So maybe, you know, even have like some of the older band members send out letters to some of the younger band members. Um, something like that would be, um, I think would really, um, engage the kids on, you know, if they're going to do band next year and that kind of thing. Um, I'm staying as optimistic as I can with our show planning for next year. The, the show reveal for um, our band is this actually this Friday. And so I'm making a really cheesy video that I'm going to show on Zoom. And, you know, a lot of the kids that are going into high school band, that's what they look forward to. That's what they're looking forward to. And so um, keeping that um, keeping keeping them engaged that way. I've also been a lot more um, um, present on social media. I've been doing things like um, doing senior spotlights and that kind of thing because our seniors, they didn't, you know, they have their senior night in marching band, but they didn't get their end of the year concert and that kind of thing. So um, being a little more present on social media and also hosting Zoom sessions and like like Steven said, um, you know, having those Zoom sessions where it's not just like, okay, here's work, 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 work. No, how are you doing? How, how, are, um, how are things, 
how are things going? Are you like, I had a high school zoom and I was like, Hey, what kind of snacks are y'all eating this week? Cause I know I'm eating, I mean, my snacks out of the house and, you know, just having those like silly conversations. Um, I, I think that that's the way that I'm approaching, um, it this year. So. That's great. Well, and, and we've got a, a suggestion here on the chat from Lisa Owens. Lisa, a great idea. And she recommended hosting Zoom awards, you know, let the kids vote on classmates for different awards on a Google form. And then uh, at the end of the year, you do your awards that way. Um, and so Lisa, I think that's a great suggestion on, on ways to continue to focus on positive uh, aspects within your program uh, and everything like that. Now, Gary, I want to bounce over because we've got a question here from, uh, from uh, Terry Hogard. Uh, band director over in Arkansas. And as a high school director, I'd love to hear your take on this. Um, we've talked about re-retaining uh, your, your sixth graders and your eighth graders. Let's talk about your rising seniors, because I know they often play a, a really important leadership role in your upcoming school year. Do you have any things that you do if you have a senior that's considering dropping out of your program, or, or how do you address that with them, um, somebody that you would like to keep involved? For, yeah, the worry of the fact that we may lose partly or we could possibly lose the season and they, they're, they're seeing that from their eyes that they may not be, that their senior year may not be what they thought it was going to be. That's tricky. That is extremely hard to handle. Um, I would, I would honestly would probably call them or email them because by the time, most likely, I'm, I'm trying to assume, I'm, I, everything I'm assuming is with, with, under the blanket of me working here at Munford. But um I would definitely contact them and have a conversation with, with probably that. And that's a great idea. Actually, I'm probably going to do that now that you said that we may go ahead and have a zoom with our juniors and just talk to them about what they may experience next year, what it may be like. I mean, I, I've been teaching forever, man. And I've never dealt with this before. <laughs> I've never been anything like this. Um, but you know, I would just contact with them and tell them you're there for them. Cause you, you probably have a really deep relationship with them. If you even if you've known them just from ninth grade, but for us, you know, we're an anomaly. I've known them since they're eleven, most of them. So I know their parents, and I, I just get in there and just dive in and, and have conversations with them. To be honest, that's what I would do. I don't know what else to do. I mean, you there is a possibility we could lose some upcoming seniors because of this. I, I really do uh, understand that that problem. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I love your idea as you're thinking out loud of hosting maybe a Zoom meeting, particularly for your rising seniors, mm -hmm. um, because it'll allow you to address some of those things up front. But also, you know, I, I think what we know is that in the absence of information, people start drawing their own picture. And so it allows you to kind of begin to articulate that well, there are unknowns, but we're going to find ways to celebrate the year and, and to make this the best year that we can for you guys, even if we don't have all of the answers. And so I think that that's a great way to kind of be proactive in that, Gary, rather than allowing people to wonder, are we going to have marching band? If we're not going to have marching band, I'm going to drop out and I'm out the door. Well, let's have a conversation about it first and, and see what we might be able to, to. And implement and implement some of the things that Stephen was saying about, you know, maybe we're going to turn into ensembles, you know, if, yeah. if that comes to that, it, you know, small I think, ensembles. I think teenagers are also going to feel, um, a huge amount of comfort if they know that we have a plan. And if, if we're like, well, we don't know, it's going to be a weird year, marching season. But if we're like, this is going to be different and we're going to do this and there's going to be some good and some bad. And we've got it all set up for you because kids, like I, I have a lot of kids of my own in my own house. Um, we have eight, eight children from a 17 year old down to a four year old. And so I see this like, how they're all going through this this home situation in their brain and um when when we have a, a plan for the day like you're gonna do this and then it's lunch it, it goes way better and, and that's gonna be comfortable for these kids too if, if these kids know that we're we're ready for them and august is gonna look very different but it's gonna it's gonna be great and and even if we're faking it even if inside <laughs> we're like we have no idea what's going on this is terrible but if we if we present to these kids like we have a plan, they're gonna get a lot of comfort in that. Yeah, yeah, and reach out to them, uh, band directors, guys. Reach out to your kids, whether it's your eleven year olds to your eighteen year olds. Reach they, they feel isolated right now, so reach out to them. Um, don't let your own like I've been fighting this as like I just want to become a hermit. Sometimes the first couple of weeks I was out of my mind, 
uh, of being high school because I've never been like this before. But, uh, and then I just started finding ways to reach out to the kids and they are feeling the same way we are. They really are. Just remember, remember we're teachers first, you know, don't worry about the program. It'll take care of itself. Just take care of kids. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point, Gary. And, and I'm, um, you know, I think back to something that Scott Lang shared with us last week in, in the recruiting session is that um, we could see a lot of other uh, band activities fall by the wayside as they're not able to address these problems as as well as bands. So to Stephen's point, if we create a welcoming environment where people feel like they can come in and we've got answers, even if we don't know them, we're making it up on the fly, uh, then I think it will gravitate. I mean, people will be attracted to that and want to continue to be a part of the program. And to Scott's point, maybe even attract new people into our program just because we're creating an environment that might be unique to some of the other things going on within our school program. So, so Gary, I want to switch gears and, and talk a little bit about your Zoom video. There's some things I love about it. So what I want to do is I want to show about 60 seconds of the hype. The hype is cool. Uh, I love that you used an alumni to help you do that because you used the resources you had available. But really the Zoom session I love because I think it addresses so much. So let me click over uh, screen share here. And we're just going to click this on. All right. Is that showing up for you guys? So I'm going to fast forward a little bit. I love the hype. The hype is very cool. Uh, but I want to show, too, um, you guys kept it really simple. And let me see if I can find a, a, a Zoom screenshot here. You guys just got all of your staff together and just answered questions about what the upcoming year might look like. And so I don't even know this point. We're just going to dive in. Just to kind of give everybody an idea of what they need, um, let me kind of talk about um, the things that um, to wear versus maybe what not to wear, and then the things that uh, you can keep with you uh, just so you can survive band camp um, and just be the most healthy, awesome, active member that you can be. So, so uh, there's so many, there's so much cool stuff going on in this video. And listen, the hype video is awesome. I was ready to join the month for band after I got done watching that particular video. But Thanks this, for making me cry that was right then. Yeah, the, the <laughs> Zoom way. Was cool. How, how did you guys come up with this idea, and what has been the response from your students to putting this video out for your incoming freshmen? It was, it was fine. Um, the, way that, the way that we – before we did the video, I, uh, I emailed all the parents, all the eighth-grade parents, and talked to, talked to them. And, and the ones that didn't contact me back, I, uh, I called every one of them just to get numbers. I mean, cause I want to know for sure whether they're in or not. Cause they were, I mean, to be honest, there were kids, I had no idea what were going to come up that are coming up a lot more. So, I mean, that's exciting. So I, I was glad I, but you got it. And this is hard uh, directors out there. You, you, it's hard for you to reach out sometimes, but you got to make some calls. You may have to be a, a, you know, a telemarketer for a minute there for band to get those kids. Cause you'll get them. And if you have conversations with their parents, you, you'll get the kids that you want and you'll hang on to them, but you got to reach and it's, it's uncomfortable to say the least, you know, cause some of those, you know, some of them will hang up on you, but <laughs> that's just life, you know, but uh, you know, you try to get a hold of them and just reach out to them. Um, but we've been as a staff have been together on this the whole time. And we, we set that video up, we released it. Uh, then we, uh, we met, we recorded the video first. We, it wasn't a live zoom cause we didn't want it to be that. We didn't want it to become a fiasco. <laughs> so, uh, we, we recorded it and then we set it up for, for questions after the fact. And then they would email us questions and we'd answer them through that way. But it was a pretty, pretty clean approach to it and it worked really well. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I really like that. I mean, you guys talked all the way down. You heard, uh, you heard just a little clip there about talking about what to wear for the upcoming band camp. But, you know, I, I love that you guys just removed the opportunity for a lack of information to set in and to create fear and unknown, particularly, I mean, let's be honest, moving from middle school to high school is, is kind of a hard time for a lot of students. There's so much newness going on. And then we're going to throw the pressure of now being in a marching band and then for some of you, a competitive marching band scenario. And I just love that you took the time to alleviate those fears, uh, the questions that you were going to receive. Yeah, we wanted to jump on that as fast as we could. Uh, also, after that, after they sent us back all their info, the, all the kids that are coming up, our section leaders now have their info and they're reaching out because that's the most important thing. They're going to hear our voice for so long before it shuts off. I mean, we're what was yeah. that old guy talking about, you know, shut up. But uh, it's like, you know, the section leaders talking to him say, hey, we're looking forward to you coming up. Uh, that and then we've set up a lot of other things and, and Mr. Young and this don't please don't understand this is not just me it's all of us it's a giant staff that's doing all this and I'm not even the top guy of the staff so I'm just I'm just here babbling um we did some other cool things too we've got a visual page right now and we're having alumni or people that march DCI that we know are are doing vis visual videos for us like visuals on how freshmen need to move how to do specific things on movement um we're doing that out. I think they and the kids, the section leaders are making videos also to show mirroring that hey, I can do this too. This is what you should look like when you're doing this these certain moves of ballet or whatever we're working on for the show next year. And also, our writer has been nice enough to let us uh, to let us access the music online. They'll get a code. They'll get online. They can they can get their music now, and they can start you know just to keep it rolling. You know, even though we don't know what we're doing next fall. We assume, as far as this this machine is going, we're having marching band. You know, that's what in our head. That's how we're approaching the entire thing. Yeah, it's you know dead on because we don't want to you know spook them at all right yeah. now. Well, and if if you're a prospective student and you watch that, you get that video. You're mm -hmm. a rising ninth grader and you get that video where you guys articulate so much to prepare them. Your my first thought is they have a plan. They know what's going on and, and we're moving in that general direction. The other thing I love, and I would be curious to see if anybody else is exploring this, is um, this is kind of a scalable idea that we could easily do with our rising beginning band students. I mean, for each class, you could have a Zoom conversation that addresses basically the frequently asked questions. Let me prepare you for next year. It's inexpensive. It can be easily done. And uh, it's a great way to kind of disseminate that information uh, among your each class to prepare them for the year. So, Stephen. Yeah, we um, we were fortunate. The guy I teach with, Spencer Sullivan, um, he reached out to the fifth grade classes, um, those teachers at our feeder at our feeder elementary schools, and so like they've been having like weekly zooms with probably two thirds. If there's you know 25 kids in the class, they'd probably get 18 to 20 of them. Um, and, you know, it's these sleepy fifth graders, and they've got like a, a cat or a pop tart. But then last week, uh, Mr. Page and Mr. Sullivan joined them in their meetings. And, you know, we would tell them, here's what to expect for middle school band and choir. And at this point, you know, we're five, six weeks into this. Kids know how to behave in a Zoom and when to, like, use hand signs. And it's become very, um, they're, they're, they're native speakers from a digital standpoint. And so they can, they, they know where to click and, and they, they can handle themselves really well in the Zoom. That's a great point, Stephen. So I want to switch gears a little bit. And because I do think retention is a, a, a two part, well, it's a mini part uh, thing that we have to address. And, and we've talked a little bit about communicating with the students. The other side of this is school counselors. Um, I mean, we know that if something like honors English or uh, an AP science class in high school is at the same time as your high school band or your wind ensemble, uh, you could see a substantial loss or decrease in students. So being proactive and managing that, I think is so important. So Kim, uh, what I want to, let's have you kick us off. How do you identify, seek out potential conflicts? And then how do you work with your counselors to alleviate them to ensure you get as many kids as possible in your program? Um, one of the things that I do is um, whoever the counselor is, and this is really middle school based, um, I, I go and talk to the counselor. We've had, since I've been teaching, we've had three different counselors that have come through our middle school. And um, 
I, I always reach out to them before the end of the year. Usually at the end of our recruitment process, I'll, I'll say, hey, we're doing recruiting. Um, this, our, our schedule has kind of stayed the same since I've been here. So it, it's, it's been pretty easy to say, okay, wherever the classes are, these are the kids that I want to put in there. My first year, um, I had, you know, we had trombone players and clarinet classes and, and all kinds of stuff. And it was, it was very confusing. And so the next year, I actually um, took on and actually – a couple of years later when we got a new counselor, you know, I went and talked to him. I, I kind of uh, sweet talked him and gave him a Sonic gift card and was like, hey, we're going to be working really closely together. We, um, I, I, I know the scheduling for sixth grade band is a little confusing and, it, it, and you don't understand because you're not a band director. Um, so here, let me take this and I will give you the list of kids who need to be in each class. And this is, and here is our band schedule. And so I kind of um, took the work off of him in that aspect. And you know, people may say, well, you're not a counselor. That's not your job, but it directly affects me. It, it, it affects me in the first two weeks of school if I've got kids in the wrong class. And so that, that I mean, that was a game changer for me, um, going directly to the counselor, creating that um, personal rela relationship with them, and then, um, you know, saying, hey, let me help you out. And they, they really appreciated that because they don't, you know, band directors were like, we want our schedules to be right. And they're like, well, we have to make sure everybody's schedule is right and that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, with class conflicts and that kind of thing, um, we it just communication all the way around at the high school. Um, it's not as big of a deal because I, I think because they've worked with the band schedule and other athletics and they have all the elective courses. Um, I've never ran into the problem of class conflicts that way, unless it comes to sports a little bit. And then we, if, if it comes down to that, then I contact the coaches and we usually work something out if we need to. Um, but whenever it comes to kids dropping classes, adding classes, we, I tell them from the very beginning, I'm like, hey, I need to know if a kid wants to drop band. Um, I, I, we, we want a parent note. We want to be able to contact the parent before you drop them. And um, about 90% of the time that works. Um, but then you also have your parents that call in and, you know, if they call three times and you've had a huge busy week and you haven't been able to directly contact that parent and, you know, it's just not the very top thing to do on your to-do list and that kind of thing. I mean, sometimes some slip through the cracks like that, but, you know, establishing that relationship with your counselor is very, very important. Just kind of like, you know, they say, make relationships with your custodians. And, you know, there are certain people that you have to make those relationships with. And your counselor is definitely one of them, especially dealing with um, beginners and when band is new, because not only are they getting calls about, you know, the different schedule, but they're getting calls that really should be directed to the band director. And so if they know that you're, you're competent and you're open and you can have that conversation with the parents, then they'll just say, Hey, call the band director. Here's their number. Um, they'll take care of you. So. Yeah. yeah. A lot of good stuff there, Kim. I mean, obviously I, I love that you're being proactive in establishing that relationship from the first day that they arrive, but it sounds like you really try to pull your chair up beside them as a partner and say, here, let me offload some of your work because it allows you to stay kind of in touch with what's going on, but it also allows you to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Right. And so I, I love that you're, you're being intentional about that relationship. And um, one of the things that I always teach my, my student leadership, and I think it's important for band directors too, is that anytime that you come with a problem, you always, like if you go to your ad administration with a problem, or if you go to your counselors with a problem, always have a solution in mind. And when, when you have that, they're going to, they're going to work with you probably, you know, as much as they can. If you come with a problem and then have the solution, say, Hey, here's my problem. Here are two or three solutions that we can, we can go about this and then go that route. I mean, it just makes things better for everybody on, on both ends. Yeah. I love that. Love that. Uh, Steven, how about for you guys? Because I know you teach both band and choir and so you've got some rotating schedules that take place that associated with that. Um, any thoughts on communicating and having a productive relationship with the counselor? You know, my, my counselor that I've currently had, and she's the best I've ever worked with, um, there's a lot of mutual trust there. And, and when there's a kid that I need to be in a class or in some cases out of a class, I, um, I try to save that bullet for a time that I really need it. And so I don't, I'm not like constantly harassing her about, hey, can you fix this? Hey, can you fix that? Um, and there's, there's times that there's a kid that does not need to be in the seventh grade alto section anymore, 
but I know that that girl needs to be in choir for a while. And so I, I'll, I'm like, all right, I've got it. I'll, I, will, I will keep up with her. But then later on, if there's a kid that I really need, a tuba player whose schedule got mixed up, and I'm like, hey, we need this tuba player in eighth grade band. And so there's, there's a, it's a mutual understanding that I'm, I'm not just in it for the purpose of the band. I, I, I want the whole, the whole middle school situation to work out well for all of these kids. So there's some times that, that I give a little, and, and there's definitely times where she um, can help me out with that. But it's, not, it's, it's never a confrontational. It's what can we do that's the best exactly. thing for these kids at this middle school. And, um, you know, if she were to leave, that'd be a whole new relationship that I would have to build up with, with a new counselor where they, they trust that I'm, what I'm going for is not in my best interest, but it's in these kids' best interest, or at least my perception of that. Yeah, that's a great point, Stephen. So on the note of school counselors, let's talk about uh, in 60 or 90 days, whenever the first time that you see your class roster and you're looking over it and you realize there's people missing for whatever reason, can you guys kind of take us through your action plan of, okay, I noticed Johnny is missing. He's an eighth grade tuba player and I really need him. Let's walk through the action plan of how you address that with the parents, the students, the counselor. So Stephen, you, you mentioned you're missing eighth grade tuba player. What are some of the things that you do to address that once rosters have been generated? Really specific um, with the kid um, because there's some times where I have a great relationship with that kid's family um, and I will, I will text mom or dad. Um, and then there'll be other times where I don't know the family, but this kid's best friend is my favorite clarinet player ever. And I'll ask best friend, hey, what's the deal with so-and-so? Um, but then there's other kids that, that I know well, and I would talk to them individually. But honestly, those aren't the kids that drop. You know, the kids that I know well that I built a relationship with, they're in it all the way. It's these other kids. So I'll, I'll always try to ask um, someone else because I think I'll get a more honest answer. If I ask the kid, they'll tell me what they think will either get me off their back or it's just something that won't hurt my feelings. They'll be like, oh, the schedule this or that. But then if I ask one of their friends that I trust or I ask their parents or another teacher that knows them well, then I'll get the real story about how they, they are uncomfortable or they hate band or they hate me or something. Uh, but then I can get to a, I'll get to a better answer than just asking, asking that kid. Oh, I hate those those days when you first get the schedule. Oh, those are the worst. <laughs> a lot of a lot of moving pieces. Gary, anything you might add? Any thoughts you might might share on that? Uh, Stephen nailed it on the head. That's exactly what you do, and you manipulate from within. And you so you don't have to have the conversation with the counselor about it. You know, you don't want to be the confrontator on any of that. Uh, but you want to work it around about way. I mean, first of all, most of the time the parents are renting an instrument, so it's like uh, you didn't schedule Bobby. He has a $4,000 French horn on his hands. Well, yeah, you're gonna have to put him in the class, please. But you won't say that. You'll have mom say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, your music store appreciates that too, Gary. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, ding, 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 you're welcome. That, we, get the, we get some of those phone calls as well. We get some of those phone calls. I'm sure y'all do. So Steven, we've got a question from the crowd and, and uh, it's, you know, I, I think you would bring a really unique perspective on this. Um, one of our, our uh, attendees has asked, um, they're in a position where they're going to be leaving at the end of the school year, but they want to set the next director up for success as it relates to retention. Do you have any thoughts or suggestions that you might share with them so that the incoming director still has a robust class and they're just not teaching empty chairs? Well, you know, and I, I mentioned that on one of the comments, if, if you can do a joint Zoom where you're the, the current teacher is introducing the, um, the next teacher and, and everything that you talk about is how it's going to be the same. You got the same room, same friends are in class. You're just got a different teacher. You're still working on the same music. We're still having the same goals and focus. Um, but I really think when there's that handoff of here's this person and I approve of this person, because you see, you see it with coaches all the time. When, when one coach is, is on board with the next coach, then hopefully the program continues and you also see it handed off really poorly. Yeah, that's great insight. Uh, Kim or Gary, anything that y'all might add to that? I don't know. In, with the, what's going on right now, that's tricky, man. Uh, just trying to, yeah, you almost have to, I don't know, like dive back into Zoom with having them meet the new person 
through with the Zoom with me, you know, if I was leaving. Uh, this is this is Mr. Jim. He's coming up. He's going to take my spot and me. And let he's he's going to have to kind of have the conversation and just let them be at ease through you. You know, you guys, you got to start that. That's that's a great question. That's hard to answer right now. Yeah. Well, and I think um, obviously, like to help that next person that's coming in, leave them as many resources as you can um, regarding your your previous year of like who the students were that were enrolled and you know even make notes about the students like this was a good one if they're not in your class you you need to you need to seek them out and and make sure they have those good resources to you know go through whenever they're whenever they come in that first day or the the week before so that they they know like oh, Johnny was in choir or band and he's not now, let me go see what's going on. And that will give them, so they don't have to search that out. Um, that will that will make it easier for them to coming into that. Into That's that a great program. idea, Kim. That's a great idea. Yeah, so wonderful thoughts. So thank you also. Thank you from uh, the question from the, from the audience there. And uh, those are really good thoughts too. But, you know, again, I, I think the key takeaway that I just keep hearing is, is the importance of intentional communication, no matter what stage in this cycle that we might be in of just whether it be in one-on-one -on -one or in these Zoom sessions or just continuing to alleviate fears and concerns and almost over communicating uh, during this particular time. So, uh, and then we've got one more question and I'm just gonna address it real quick. So uh, from Lisa, she's talking about um, admin that wanna limit class sizes. And so Lisa, I'm actually gonna encourage uh, next week on the advocacy call, we're gonna be talking about that and maybe how to communicate the importance of music and how we're gonna address some of these changes uh, that we might see next fall. So uh, as it relates to that question, Lisa, on, on class sizes, we're gonna pose that to our panel next week. So I hope you'll come and join us as we talk about how to advocate for our programs successfully in our music community. So uh, gang, we've got just a few more minutes and I'm just gonna ask real quick, do you have any more retention activities that maybe you're mulling around in your mind that you wanna just think out loud to the group and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this to get people's creative juices flowing. And in recap, do you have any retention activities that you've already done that have been really successful? You've received a really positive response from them from what you've already done with your students. So Kim, I'll kick off with you. Anything you're thinking about doing in the future? Um, whenever I was listening to Gary earlier about, um, you know, he, he said that, you know, they do the music in our schools during that month of March and really promoting in, in that month of, month of March, you know, I, I think that's a great idea. And man, I, I am constantly, I'm a list person and I've got a notebook and I've just been jotting things down that just come to my head and like, um, even during this meeting, I've been, yeah, I've been, made, I've been taking notes from, from the other two guys in this meeting, just getting down, you know, different ideas. I, you know, right now, it's so hard to look at what next year is going to look like, but just, you know, staying optimistic and staying proactive and, and that, that kind of thing. I mean, that's the only thing and having discussions like these. I mean, I talk to my band director friends all the time I get all of their you know I'll watch their Facebook see what they're doing and I steal it because that's teaching <laughs> you steal people's ideas and, and see what works and what doesn't work so great thanks Kim great insight Stephen how about for you um you know I've been delivering meals on, on a school bus pretty often these last few weeks and um there's a lot of our students that have not had a positive adult interaction for weeks Every interaction they've had with adults has been confrontational and it's going to be that way for like a six month time frame. So if when they see us, it's not a nagging, have you worked on this? Can you play this scale? It's more of a, I miss you. I can't wait to see you. Um, and another thing that, that we've tried to do, um, when there's an opportunity to have them listen to some music, if you can have them listen to the stuff that they were working on six weeks ago, then suddenly it's like, Oh yeah, that's why I love this rather than be like, Hey, listen to this, um, you know, Delius Sinfonietta, listen, listen to the grade two piece that you were just working on. Then they remember why they love it. And one thing they miss about it, and it's going to make them more likely to look forward to doing it again. That's great insight, Steven. So you're actually using music for some memory recall there to kind of bring back up those feeling, feelings of nostalgia and, and desire to be back in the program. So I like that. Great insights. Gary, anything that, that you might add uh, on retention? No, Steven, Steven nailed it on the head. Um, 
and, and I love the fact that you're in the in the community because I feel like us as educators, we've we've got to dive in. Uh, you can't just sit at home and just become a hermit. You've got to get in. So uh, I've been calling my principal uh, since the second week out, and I've been volunteering with her. We've been cleaning lockers out. I've been passing out homework packets just so that the kids can still see, like you said, positivity in their life, and they don't have to go into this dark hole. And and I, and to be honest, guys, this meeting has helped me mentally more so than you know I, I know we've been talking a lot but this helps has my anxiety has dropped a lot and i'm not normally an anxious person anyway any, but anyway but yeah so you know get in there go if they let you in your school get in there I've, I've been passing out instruments for me it's been super tricky to get my instruments back to my kids heads like i had like a hundred instruments in throughout the school <laughs> to get them out and I, and that has been a nightmare for the last couple of weeks but i'm just i'm down to about 20 now but Again, just go volunteer, get in there, like help. I love the delivering meals thing. I love that. Um, just remember, you're you're an educator first. You know, it's not it's not the music. It's you're trying to you know help these kids move forward. Yeah, yeah, that's I, I completely agree, Stephen. What you said, and Gary, you polished it off so nicely. Just keeping it in perspective of, of to what these students might be in, in, encountering and how we can be a little bit of an oasis for them away from that and an opportunity. And I think when those things happen, the students are going to be attracted to our program, not because of band, but because of the community that we're creating. And oh yeah, we're doing it with music too. And so mm -hmm. I, I think that's just a, such a good perspective. And, and Gary, I love your ideas of volunteering at the school and being visible, whether it's through driving the bus or helping just clean out lockers and helping students and all of that stuff. Um, and that, that's big time points from your administrator. Because yeah. they're, they're, they, they are a skeleton crew right now, man. And they are alone, too. So it really helps them to get it and help them out like that. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a great point. So, uh, and and we, I know we've got some directors here that are, are within the AMRO community, some that are outside of the AMRO community. And, and to our AMRO directors, you know, we do have reports of all of the students that got instruments from us and their serial numbers. And so if you need that to help you get these instruments out and know what instruments are still in your band room, maybe that don't have name tags, your AMRO representative can help you out with that. Just another resource we have available to you. So, um, well, that wraps up all of my conversations, my questions. So from our panelists, bravo, thank you. You all were absolutely wonderful. I always enjoy these conversations. Again, next week, we're going to be talking about advocacy, and we've got some different people coming. We've got Nola Jones with the Conselmer, uh, um, Conselmer uh, group, uh, the Division of Education up there. But of course, she's got a background and was formerly the uh, Fine Arts Director for Nashville City Schools up there. And so a great resource. We've also got Todd Shipley from uh, the Tennessee Governor's Office going to be talking about the Department of Education and some of the resources that, that are available to help us advocate and communicate the importance of music in our programs. So that'll be next week's conversation. As a reminder, you will need to re-register the Zoom key changes each and every week. So if you're on this week, you're going to need to register for next week. So we look forward uh, to hearing from everyone and having you be a part of those conversations. So again, to all of our panelists, thank you so much. To everybody that's joining us, thank you. Uh, a recording of this will be made, uh, made available. Until then, have a wonderful evening and stay safe. Bye, everyone.